The page settings control group, located in the site info pane, is where we get to start having fun with our gallery. And the reason is because these are the first controls we have where the changes we make will become visible here in the web preview. Uh, before we get to visible changes though, there are just a few more items uh, that are very important that we can't see. The first two are character set and text direction, which are both here for localization purposes when you are creating a gallery in a language other than English. Depending on your native language or the language you're using for your gallery, you might want to change the character set. For example, uh, the default is universal alphabet, typically shorthanded as UTF-8. Uh, and that's good for English and for most Western languages. If you're speaking Korean, for example, you would probably want to change the character set to Korean. Uh, there's also Japanese, Chinese, Hebrew, Arabic, and uh, other choices which are pretty standard in the web design world. The next one is text direction. While most Western languages read left to right, and that's the default for the gallery, there are some languages, such as Arabic languages, which read right to left. And you can tell your page to support that type of writing uh, by changing it here in text direction. Now, this input, HTML title, is probably one of the most important things you can dial into these controls for search engine optimization. This is the first thing that search engines look at when uh, searching your page or when, when listing it in search results. It's also what is going to appear as the headline for your site when it comes up in search results. So the first instinct of most people is to give each gallery its own unique title based on the images that are in there. Um, but that's actually the wrong instinct. What this should be is sort of the overarching uh, title or piece of information that you want associated with your entire website. And so this should be the same in every gallery you make and in every page you put on your website. It should be the name of your business or your name as a photographer. Um, because this is how you get found. So if this were for my photography business, I would punch in Matthew Campagna Photography. I, I might use a hyphen and give it additional information, such as my location, Dallas, Texas, which is where I'm located at the moment. Um, that way people know that I'm not some random photographer over in Spain or you know, in Japan. I'm here in Dallas and serving a Dallas clientele. Um, this will, in particular, help you, you know, if people are looking for photographers in their area, if you have your name, the word photography, and your location uh, in the title bar, it's going to make you that much easier to find. And the other thing you might want to put up here are uh, a few, not too many, but just a few keywords for the types of photography you do. So commercial, portrait, landscape, fine art photography might be what you choose to put up there. So again, this is a extremely important for search engine, search engine optimization and you should be it should be your name as a photographer or your business name, your location and then just a few keywords representing the type of work that you do. And now we get into the fun stuff. Things that we can change and see here on the page. So the, uh, the first is the page background color. Um, and there's a trick when you're using these color pickers. If you click and hold, you can then drag the mouse cursor around the screen and sample colors uh, from anywhere you like. Not just in here, but out here on your page as well. Um, the other thing you can do is if you click here, you, can, you have RGB colors, hue, saturation, luminescence colors. You can also click hex and dial in a, a hex color, which is what we tend to use on the web. So I have a color palette off on my other display here uh, with hex values that I'm going to be using while I work. So I'm going to dial in my color and hit return. Very bright orange. I'm going for loud colors in this design. Um, so then we have the uh, a few controls here that are master controls for the page. These will mostly be overwritten by specific controls for each page component. But it's always good to have a, a sort of fallback catch-all. So uh, you can set the page text color and the color of hyperlinks and the hover color of those hyperlinks here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, I'm going to leave the page text color white for the time being. The hyperlinks, I've got this off-white cream color I'm going to use. And for the hovers, I'm going to make those black for now. And again, you may come back later and redo this, but it's always good to you know go ahead and dial in some colors while you're here. You can choose whether the hyperlinks on your page should be underlined either all the time or only on hover. And then you can set a master font family for your, uh, for your page. And again, this will often be overwritten by individual components, but it's good to set a master font family for anything that doesn't have a font designation of its own. There are uh, several presets you can choose already built in, or if you'd like, you can go ahead and change the cascade of font families here in the, uh, the text field. So you can type in additional comma-separated fonts uh, using CSS format. And again, if you don't know what CSS format for font families is, it's probably best just to stick with the presets. But for those with a little bit of web design, you've got very flexible control over the fonts that appear on your page. Um, the header setting control group uh, has a couple of options that are specific to this upper portion of your page. This is where we can, for example, change the color of that header bar. So uh, again, I'm going to dial in a hex color. I'm going to make this sort of a crimson color. Um, when you have the header displayed, uh, it can be hyperlinked. By default, the hyperlink takes you back to this same page we're looking at. But you might want to go ahead and set that hyperlink to the root of your website. So http colon slash slash www.yourdomain.com and that will always take you back to the front page of your website. Or, like I said, you can leave it at the default value of index.html, which when people click this header will just keep them on the same page. Uh, another thing you can do if you want to have no action is just hit shift 3 to put in a number sign. Uh, fix header width. By default, the header element takes up the full width of this page. Um, and you can fix that header width. Say if you want a, only a centered portion, maybe you want your header to be from here to here. You can use this fixed width option. You can then adjust the width of that space using uh, the header width slider. And you can use the header height slider to make space. So if you have a very tall ID plate, uh, you can make this space taller or a very short one you can make that smaller. You can also get rid of that space completely by setting it to zero which uh, is actually a good thing to do in some layouts as we will see uh, in the next several videos. But for now that is the header and uh, we'll come back to these controls as I show you various techniques for setting up different header configurations.